Okay, hi guys, just testing. Uh, just, yeah, if you're logged in, let me know. Uh, there is a chat function, let me know whether you can hear, see me, okay. Hope you got your popcorn ready. Bit of Brexit going on this evening, of course. We're gonna do a bit of a rundown. Uh, not now, I'm just getting the feed up and running, uh, just generally, so uh, I'm sure people are gonna be coming in and out of the chat, so uh, Sean, Sana, Andy, hello. Good to have you with us. I'm sure um, Safe, Ellen, the others will, will log in as well. And, and uh, I know some of you know those guys. So, uh, Simeon, nice to have you with us. Hope you're well. So basically, what's going to happen here? Well, let me let me quickly transfer my screen. Um, what's going to happen here is I'm going to keep my um, my feed on essentially for the next 45 minutes. So I'm not going to be speaking continuously. Um, I'll probably have a little chat about, I don't know, just generally what's been going on. And I know not everyone is familiar with uh, Amplify. So obviously, if there's any questions that you guys have, feel absolutely free to, uh, to ask. Now's a good time. Um, and if I can help answer any questions, and of course, uh, I will do. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to leave the feed running for the moment. Uh, as you can see, just on my chart, I was just having a look. Um, about the S&P 500 performance, of course. Uh, we've seen some further positive gains throughout the session today. If I just transition my screen over, um, for anyone who's, who's new to, to following us, you've got the Euro dollar future top left, you've got cable center. It's obviously gonna be the one in focus right here. I'll make bigger when the actual Brexit vote comes out. You've got gold futures here in the top right. You've got the DAX, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500 on the right, and then you've got WTI crude futures uh, and the US 10-year uh, pretty quiet, flat, sideways range down about one and a half ticks at the moment in the bottom right. So yeah, US equities continuing to you know, perform at this point. So I mean, this is the day session. It's been quite an uh, incredible, uh, I guess, 48-hour period, despite underperformance that you have seen in some isolated stock stories obviously Boeing being one company still suffering as a stock price on the back of that uh, tragic incident with another uh, aircraft crash at the weekend a second of which the same model in five months is, is kind of definitely weighed on them but otherwise the bigger macro picture continues to be one of uh, generally although durables was good um, earlier today inflationary conditions have been relatively benign kind of further cementing the fact that Jerome Powell and the Fed you know they can remain um, dovish and they were right to do so and the most likely course of action here is a pause of pause of rates uh, and so technically speaking I know normally leave that side of things to, to obviously the main man Sam North on the technical side but if I make this chart just that little bit bigger um, that was that trend line, of course, from the, the kind of triple test that we had uh, and then how that had kind of reacted and almost we got a bit of fatigue and that run up that was so strong uh, since the, the beginning of the year initiated by really two underlying fundamental drivers, the, the dovish turn by the Fed and also the progression seemingly on the trade war side. Um, and that's helped get us back up. but. You know, we've got to a point now of somewhat exhaustion. Interestingly, the big equity funds in the market, the, what we would call the real money, um, not the speculative side, which would be kind of us guys operating in an intraday or in a proprietary trading sense, that even though the market's been going higher, these kind of real money funds, the money hasn't been following that trend. If anything, there's been outflows. So yeah, that makes a bit of sense while we kind of hit the upper bound of these levels here as we kind of briefly broke above 2800, but a bit of profit taking, and I think rightly so at that point, at around these, you know, this this is a, a sharp gain. I mean, percentage wise, going from where we were, I mean, let's just take it from the beginning of the year's low, so we encapsulate this year, we've had a rally of a best part of 15 and a half percent. I mean, that's the best Jan Feb performance since 1987 alone. So now upside, Obviously, there's some interesting levels coming up. We've got the uh, the level kind of here that we've got marked up. We've got close to it, so just above it now. So we are trading a multi-month 
This is actually a five month high we're printing right at the moment in US equities, uh, in case of the S&P. And so again, the bigger outlying levels here, kind of looking at that mark, the initial um, kind of recovery off that sell off that we had during the first part of October, uh, coinciding with some of the support points back from the middle of summer last year. If we break, now that we've gotten ourselves back above here, I guess the a higher price points if we can break above that level at 24 and a quarter in the futures then you know certainly does open up prospects of targeting uh, a move a little bit higher up you know possibly looking up at here 2865 that brings into play quite an interesting area really here you can see how that's acted as resistance multiple times and support the same and so it would be a big area here to watch I guess slightly medium term uh, a break above that might open up further upside obviously risk events come from the likes of any negative kind of breakdown in China US talks but that seemingly has been relatively uh, comfortable at this point so despite economic data being a little bit weak um, overall if it's weak and it shifts the Fed's needle to becoming more dovish well, then ultimately, that's going to be supportive for equities at that point. So, yeah, interesting moves today, uh, certainly in the U.S. stock market, for sure. Uh, but obviously, Brexit is the main um, the main thing we're looking at. Uh, that's going to be the main fanfare for this evening. Uh, so we're going to get into that in a bit more detail shortly. But in the meantime, uh, any questions possibly that you have market-related or amplify related then absolutely be my guest far away now is the better time than ever so anything I can do to help just let me know uh, hopefully for any of those who do follow us uh, as you can see we've got kind of a new framework to the feed so I hope you like it I hope uh, it feels a little bit more polished and professional um, but yeah any questions let me know in that chat and I can keep an eye on it for the time being. Jose, Jose Stubbs, how are you? Where's Stubbs? <laughs> safe, hey. safe, safe wants to say hello. Jose, <laughs> where is he? Do I see him? Stunner. We're thinking about you on days like these, to be honest. We, yeah. should, we should really fly him out. <laughs> fly him out for the Brexit, 28th of March. <laughs> yeah. So for like for anyone who um, who doesn't know, Jose Stubbs, who's in the in the chat room at the moment. Uh, he did our course back in 2015. 2015, uh, and Jose, Jose, Jose is akin to Amplify family, uh, very much so in that sense. Uh, came all the way over from uh, from Philly via Florida. So yeah, Jose, good to have you with us. Like like it always is. Yeah, WTI crude futures just pushing up to uh, session highs. So, um, woman with hairstyle, <laughs> I like your, uh, I like your name. Let's have a look. What levels have we got on the upside? So yeah, definitely 58, big level. I mean, just not only uh, you know a couple of different reasons. You got previous tests and rejections, so good ever resistance and previous price action recent weeks overlaying that with the handle the figure at 58 in the futures and the r2 so hence a little bit of further added push through on the this this move higher now if you go back on a longer time frame i mean this is looking at crude futures you can see how key that level is so yeah i mean i guess it depends if you're trading um wti crude what your time frame is for that trade uh, would define then how you're probably going to manage it you can see here the reason why the break of 58 technically has helped accelerate some of that move, even though there's been a directional 
um, kind of longer term bias to, to move higher, you can see that the market was in kind of an area of consolidation in about two and a half dollar range for the best part of uh, three weeks. But a break of that today, uh, obviously we did have all infantry numbers as well earlier on in the session, definitely helping to just break out of this. And where do we go from here? Well, again, you've got to be looking at a fairly longer time frame chart. Uh, probably initial targets, uh, again, depending on your time horizon. If you are in a medium term position, then you know technically there's not a lot up there until you start getting to the 59 handle. 05 then brings in uh, that kind of area here, which would be the, the kind of late November 17 mark. So maybe coming out of some of the position there, if you were taking it higher, uh, then the kind of March 18 lows, which basically correspond with uh, 60. The interesting thing is then when you start marking up these levels, the recent break here is at 58. We're looking at quite clear targets at 59. We're also looking at the target of 60. You can see how when the market was in free fall, when we had this 45% correction from October to the end of last year, that how the market really kind of takes you know, a real reference point in those fast money moves for those those handles. So, yeah, if it was intraday, I guess you've got to think about timing. The traditional um, previous NYMEX pit hours would be a 7 kind of p.m. close London time. So you've got about 25 minutes. Typically, if you put a volume study on these charts, you'll see the volume obviously spikes up in the futures market at the or what used to be the NYMEX pit open hours uh, at 2 p.m. London. So what you'll see is if you were in that long and an intraday environment, I'd probably be looking to come out of that position um, soon because the likelihood is you're not going to get another 60 cent pop up to the 59 handle ahead of seven, I would, I would suggest. If you're in a medium term position, I think this is quite a, a, a good break higher. I think now you've got a platform at that 58 and I think you'd probably want to sit in it looking for targeting a 59 and if you're feeling more more bullish about it than, than the 60 mark. Um, I think from a the, the reason why equities are rallying, this idea that the Fed are going to hold off uh, and be a little bit more um, dovish, that's going to help propel and at least stabilize market sensitivity and, and equities would appreciate, oil will appreciate because it mitigates this growing negativity about a negative global growth story. So that's going to help a positive US China trade situation is going to help as well for that directional from a fundamental point of view and then you've got that 58 break which technically is is quite nice so um, yeah I hope that helps from a bit of a view on oil um, in terms of Dennis in terms of the um, amendments we're going to run through that um, in about 10 minutes so I'll, I'll leave Brexit for now and we'll talk about the pound in a second Yeah, I mean, definitely, Jose, uh, to add to the discussion there about oil, let's not forget the fact that you know, if the Fed are going to be dovish and so on, don't forget the dollar's got to reprice in the new, the new norm of monetary policy from the Federal Reserve. And uh, if that's a Fed pause, not a two rate hike uh, that they've been signaling, um, then essentially the dollar's got to, got to back off to a certain degree. Um, so the dollar index today is trading down um, two tenths of one percent uh, and that certainly helps as well for that directional play um, yeah VIX the volatility index is low helping equities yeah it's kind of you know the, the chicken or the egg kind of situation um, obviously all of those macro risks that I had talked about you know if you think about it let's go back to equities for a sec well this oil chart tells the same story as the equity chart you had a massive sell-off in Q4 of last year. And this was instigated by the fear of policy tightening and concerns about global growth conditions as quite a few economic data metrics globally started to slow and the trade war was escalating at the time. But if you remove those factors, or at least they start um, looking more positive, well then ultimately the VIX is going to start to, to die down as a byproduct of that and we kind of move back into this kind of uniform slow progression higher uh, in the equity market possibly. Yeah, any other questions? Again, we'll get into the amendments and Brexit in about 
five, ten minutes time. So I'll save that for the moment. Yeah, but anything else anyone else is watching? Or uh, I can help. Okay, K Kango Kid, um, what do I think about the S&P 500? Um, well, uh, look, we'll go back to that discussion because we were looking at the spoos earlier, but yeah, let's look at it from, from two different ways of which you could, sorry, let me just get my chart centered correctly. There's two different ways we could look at this. So if I put the S&P here, so this is that broader look at the S&P 500 that we were saying, we were saying medium term, that 28.65 could be a good target. I mean, honestly, if I was in an intraday position at this point, then I would probably be looking at that 24 and a quarter, um, that kind of area. I mean, you can see how the market hasn't really extended yet on some of these gains. If we start drawing out, I think we found a bit of natural resistance at these levels. So. Yeah, if you were in that long position, and let's say you managed to get in a little bit lower down, possibly on the uh, the movement around the R1, for example, I don't think that's a bad place to book profit and exit the trade of where we are at the moment, um, to be honest. Uh, and then Kango Kid, if you think if the volume is gone, if the volume is starting to dissipate, then all the more reason that probably you wanna you wanna stop that trade then at that point. Uh, the one thing a couple of you guys are mentioning Boeing. Well, look, this is this is the Dow on a minute profile. Um, now, a minute profile is not something I'd recommend that people would trade on, but certainly a minute profile does give you a bit of a narrative towards um, news when it breaks. Uh, and recently, we've just had U.S. President come out, and he said that the U.S. is grounding flights by Boeing's 737 Max 8. Um, so that following of course what we were just talking about at the beginning of the session so that certainly has seen the Dow just blip a little lower and certainly then if you were in that intraday position here in the S&P I would I would brook profit at this level would be my my recommendation because at that point if the Dow's under pressure obviously the the constituents and composition of that index is different to the S&P but just gives you a reason with the other indices pairing back a little bit um, you know, a good opportunity to close it out to maximise it at probably the top of the the move that you're going to see today. As I said, if you look at the S and P on a the level, I mean, you've kind of hit it as you can see from those previous highs we had right at the beginning of the month, uh, the kind of repeat test that we had back on the third reopening of trade for that week and on the fourth as well. Uh, but yeah, Dow a little bit of pressure obviously on the back of that that headline, uh, and overall Dow up just a hundred now. Uh, S&P stuff about 24 and a half.
Okay, just just while I've got you guys online, um, I know obviously there's quite a few of you that I'm familiar with uh, that I may have encountered before, having done some of the amplified training or you've been trading, you've met me before. But for the other guys who maybe are just following this on the YouTube channel, um, there are different ways and means you can utilize us, I guess, as a resource. Um, one of those is the Amplify Twitter channel. So here every morning I'll post basically about uh, five or six of the most market moving influential stories every day. Um, very useful obviously for you know a lot of people my specific role is basically geared around providing um, our traders with a, a fundamental macroeconomic overview of markets. Uh, for anyone who's new to markets, that typically is an, in, an area that's quite underserved. It's an area of which is absolutely pivotal to any institutional kind of strategy. Um, you know, any hedge fund is not just trading technicals. They have a very strong overall view on the market uh, in that respect. Um, so, well, hold on. I just saw a little blip in the market. Could be a headline instigated. Let me see what's, what's come out. Yeah, that's Trump. Trump coming out just saying he's in no rush for a China-US trade deal. So immediate downside in equities. You can just see there, look at the NASDAQ instant response there to the Trump comments. So yeah, if you book profit at that level in the S&P, that would have been a good spot. Coming under some pressure, push back to R2 now. So yeah, this is, you know, we were just talking about the whole reason why equity markets have remained in bullish mood has been because key narrative being the China trade developments but if he's now coming out and saying the opposite that's a bit of an issue so yeah equities little move there on the back of that quite quickly reversed though he hasn't tweeted it so presumably he's giving a speech live at the moment I'll keep you updated Yeah, it's interesting uh, with Trump, not in a rush to make a deal with China on trade. What was interesting is that if you remember uh, last week and the first couple of days of this week, China have been having their party congress uh, meetings, which if you remember, um, Trump became relatively passive in the negotiation in the lead up to that. That's the main in really important political event in China. And we were saying before how it would be interesting to see when that party policy meeting is finished, what then happens to the trade deal? Was Trump just managing this in order to facilitate a smooth passage through Congress on the Chinese side as to not cause any undue complication? Um, now that that's coming to an end, you know, now he goes back to the tactic of hardballing the negotiation, getting a little bit of further traction now in the market. Spot gold also now, a bit of a delayed effect there. Gold now starting to pick up. We've just broken the previous day's high. So session highs now for gold as equities come under a little bit of pressure. The 10 year unresponsive, but the dollar index is coming back down to retest session lows at the moment. So rather than a flight to quality traditional move, what you're starting to see is a little bit of, you know, trade war is ultimately bad for, for the US. Uh, and that certainly helps gold from that risk perspective, but the dollar inverse relationship as well. So, um, yeah, quite an interesting headline for sure. Trump 
you know, this is what Xi, the Chinese president, has been so incredibly fearful of. It's been talked about a lot because Trump's been trying to get him over to Florida to ink the deal. But this is exactly what the Chinese officials have said they were worried about. Trump says one thing one day and then he flips it on its head and the markets have got to reprice that new normality. Uh, if the dollar does keep weakening, I'd keep an eye on euro dollar here. Um, coming up to its R1, it's an area of resistance throughout the session. Uh, it hasn't really managed to punch above that over the last several hours. If we did, it might open up a little bit of upside. Uh, if we break that R1, I'd probably be looking then up towards uh, initial targets at 28 and a half. Um, that kind of area here. So the previous highs before the move lower. Uh, granted, this was the ECB sell-off that we had with that dovish surprise. So yeah, that these three areas here would obviously coincide with an area of around there if we were to break higher the intraday highs we're just coming up to it now in the euros keep an eye on that um, a break of the r1 could open up another 10 pip extension on that move if you're managing that trade uh, that's the area i'd probably be looking at all right markets are moving on trump he's still speaking at the moment so i'd say keep an ear out I'll continue to watch it, but let's quickly just do a quick wrap of what we're looking for with Brexit. So, making making this as simple as possible, there's a couple of different things that are going to be happening. Um, so, effectively, there's there's three things that we need to be aware of here. Point one is the government's motion. Now, this is one where the lawmakers in Parliament will vote to decline approval of leaving the EU on the 29th of March without a deal and a framework of the future relationship. So this is what the government's putting forward. So this is a vote to decline approval of leaving the EU without a deal. So we're expecting this to be a yes. The government then would be forced or MPs are forced into the fact that you're going to have to um, either take Theresa's deal at that point makes it more favorable or palatable at that point. Now, that's not the only motion, though, that's being heard. Um, one of the amendments, and the way that this is going to work, is that from 7 p.m., you're going to get amendments A and amendments F. So I'm going to explain those two first, because then, later, at 7.45 to 8.30, we get the government's motion. So the first two amendments that we're going to have, and the only two we're going to be looking at tonight, um, the first of which is something called the, the spellman Dromi Amendment. And basically, if I flip over to here, um, the Spellman Amendment Conservative member put down an amendment deleting all of May's text and replacing it with a much plainer rejection of leaving without a deal. So this is basically exactly the same as the government's, however, removing only or removing any reference to the default position of a no deal Brexit. So this would open up, it's kind of like a slightly, uh, a way of opening up an opportunity for parliament to take back some control over then the no deal situation. Now, what has come out is Spellman will not even be supporting her own amendment. And sources have suggested this afternoon that the government has been looking to pull it as they fear having to sack Tory party members should they defy the government whip on the vote of the government's motion. So we are expecting that amendment to fail and we're expecting the government's motion to pass, just to be clear. Now, the other amendment we're looking for, and I know this gets quite complicated so I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible with something called um, the Amalt House Amendment. Now what this is is proposes the government to take steps to minimize no deal disruptions. Now what this basically looks like is this. This is the Malt House Compromise and it basically sets out the process of a managed no deal. Tariffs, extension timelines, citizens rights and so on. Now this is something that's been um, backed by the likes of the, the ERG, for example. But this too 
um, this one is expected to to fail it's less likely to pass uh, this bridge about dealing with a managed no deal we've not quite got to at this point now this leads then to the idea of if then the two amendments a and f fail and the government's motion goes through well let's deal with then the mechanism of what happens next what happens next is we have another vote same time tomorrow and this is about the extension of article 50 now it remains unclear at this point how long the extension would be and there's critical questions there about how do Britain justify and convince the EU of that delay for what reason now article 50 being delayed basically comes with three scenarios scenario one is a technical extension for us to prepare for a no deal number two is complete ratification of a deal ie now we've got further to the deadline and a formal risk of a no deal could still be there do we now take Theresa's deal and the legis legislative requirements to go through Parliament also require a short multi-month extension or does the UK decide to hold a general election or a second referendum the latter less likely but the latter the most pound positive if that was to be the overall kind of outcome so a couple of different things here the government's vote again is to decline approval of leaving the EU without a deal and a framework of future relationships so we are expecting that uh, to be supported this vote would not change anything unless a subsequent decision was taken such as extending article 50 process tomorrow if they cannot decide to do that Britain still has a no-deal Brexit which is the most undesirable outcome from an economic impact and from a market reaction negative point of view the only thing is with an extension and the final point do not forget that all EU 27 states need to unanimously agree to that extension and that extension of course needs to come with clarity from Britain over what the reason is so yeah quite a few things to interpret I know um, I was looking here let me just flip over to the charts uh, this here is the pound so this is the journey of of cable over the last two days uh, you've come in different sequences this was Theresa May travel traveling to Salzburg she manages manages to get a small concession about the wording on Northern Irish backstop things look positive we gap up and we trade positive in the overnight session however everything then uh, was down to Geoffrey Cox the Attorney General did he give his legal backing and recommendation that actually this is enough to satisfy him and he said basically no the market then repriced and took back the entire gain that was seen on the build-up of maybe May getting a deal through right at the end so then we priced back and then today well the one thing that this means though is when the market is down at these lower bound levels well ultimately you know if a no deal does get averted which is looking more and more likely um, I think the bookies have got an actual material cliff edge no deal happening is absolutely minimal um, then the market's got to recover because ultimately these things are pound positive um, just looking on the pound in a minute chart seeing a little bit of volatility at the moment uh, let me just get the pound into view so this is quite typical a little bit of a function of uh, obviously as we go into seven o'clock no one really wants to have orders in the market so uh, if I had a ladder visible uh, I could show you the depth market depth the liquidity very quiet time of day no one wants to be in a position of risk over an announcement even if it does seem relatively binary uh, that this should be largely a non-event so even with that said the market's likely to see quite big whips or price action when this does come out so again looking for the the amendments uh, a and f the spellman one is a the malt house one is f uh, the latter one's probably lesser important um, if 
the Malt House one went through, I think that could be a slight negative. If the Spellman one goes through, I think that's a slight positive. Um, well, actually, I think that is a, a, a positive. If the government's motion goes through, I think that's a positive, but a slightly lesser degree than the Spellman one, if that makes sense. Um, don't forget, though, to put into context the market's pre-positioning. We have rallied already a decent amount, about almost two points in the last 12 hours. So if this all goes as expected, it might remain in a relative range from where we were just up to 32 handle up to around that R1, which was the previous night's high or morning's high. All right, I'll come off the mic. Let's listen in. Uh, it doesn't look like they've begun as yet. This could be a bit of a slow burner, but we should hopefully get the amendment answers coming up shortly. Okay, Amendment A is being heard now. Okay, so if, if you're watching Parliament TV at the moment, and obviously this is completely new to you, so the, the speaker uh, basically has cleared, cleared the lobby, which means now they all go out into the lobby, and basically it's like a, a system where they walk through like an arch-shaped corridor, and basically then there's electronic tagging of who votes for what. It's a pretty quick process, doesn't normally require too long, but they basically have to leave the Commons building, walk down depending on what side of the corridor they go down, it's basically you know, giving their vote. And then they come back in, the vote is announced. So it shouldn't be just a few minutes. Yeah, one of the guys, uh, Jasminder, is it worth placing a trading cable now? I would say no. It's 
not worth placing a trade now. Again, this is one of those situations where what you'll see is the market will start jumping quite a bit. This is because of a lack of orders in the market for the complete opposite reason you've just said. If you are understanding there's going to be a big bout of potential market volatility, then you need to be aware of when to when to not be in the market. Just wait for the result, then look to take action accordingly is the best advice. Okay, just, just while we're waiting for some of the, the kind of sterling related Brexit news to come out, um, the Squawk was just saying there's a, a buy side imbalance of over 3 billion. Uh, they were saying it's a source, I would take that with a bit of a pinch of salt. Um, basically a buy side imbalance is an order imbalance in a situation resulting from an excess of buy or sell orders for a specific security on a trading exchange. In short, Typically, this doesn't really come into play until right at the end of the Wall Street session. So normally London time between eight and nine. But if there's a three billion buy side imbalance, that basically means there's a whole bunch of orders from a buy side to be executed before market close. That should be a big bullish signal if that is true. However, my experience tells me that three billion is massive and I find that incredibly hard to believe. Um, the Squawk said they're going to look into it to try and validate it from other um, sources to check its authenticity. So I keep your ears out on the on the Squawk if that's the case. Uh, at the moment, U.S. equities have bounced a little bit. You can see in these center charts uh, the Nasdaq and the uh, the S&P. So again, the earlier weakness. Donald Trump has come out. He's basically said he's in no rush for a China-U.S. deal. And he's also grounded all of those Boeing um, aircraft, the 737 MAX 8s that were involved in that Ethiopian airline crash at the weekend. So a bit of a recovery from that move. Let's see if there's any more details that come out on the, the order imbalance.
Okay, just while we um, await for the results of the amendments, I've just seen a, a new story. This just came out in the last two minutes on the FT. And it's talking about some cabinet members have penciled in. Uh, they've been very nice. It's my birthday, March 26, as a new common showdown. So basically, the meaningful vote, which failed last night, which failed by the record size government standing back in the 15th of January, she could bring back again for a third time. And that being, what, three days before um, the 29th, which is obviously the, at this point the end of Article 50. Now the reason for this is, is that they're looking to revive talks that the deal, Theresa May's deal, could still survive. And remember, EU have said the deal that they brokered with us back on Monday, that's the last deal you're going to get. The only thing that can change here is obviously we are stepping closer to the cliff edge and is that enough then that actually upon assessment she's gone from what a 230 defeat to 149 defeat can she narrow that gap by then enough people going wow oh no deal is actually going to happen here we need to back the plan of the prime minister at this point even if it's not exactly what it is that we wanted at the risk of a no deal one side or the risk of a no Brexit second referendum parliament takes controls and the Remainers have it and so does she get more um, kind of Brexit supporters to, to back her deal through lack of alternate choice that is Yeah, just going back to that FT article, this is a right tagged at the end. Um, senior Eurosceptics say if the choice crystallised between accepting May's deal, accepting Brexit might not happen at all, then many of the 75 Tories who voted against the government last night would back the agreement. This is what I mean. Politicians will be politicians to the point of where, you know, they come right to the cliff edge, as I said. It's just traditional politi political tactics. Okay, they're all come back into the Commons now, so we'll get the results coming up shortly for Amendment A. Yeah, just getting Bloomberg sources now saying Theresa May is said to plan to seek Brexit extension of about two months. So a little bit already now front running sources about what she's going to do tomorrow, granted that the motion passes and now the details going to be on what exactly extension is. So a little bit of upside in the pound, fairly moderate though at this point. But if she's talking about that sort of stuff, well, you've got to think that the motion is going to pass from the overall government side. Uh, so this would be a net positive, I'd say, in that sense. Keep an eye on R1. That's the area there, the previous high. Let me remove this. I'd probably be looking, if we do start to move higher, that area there. And then I'd be, you know, that the previous resistance point and then the spike higher that we had previously after that could be, could be targets. Uh, then you've got the handle at 133 comes in just above that spike high that we had from the other night.
Yeah, so starting to see a bit of upside going through the pound, obviously just snapping through those levels that we were looking at, that R1 and that previous high. So again, from a numbers point of view, uh, Spellman Amendment A in 312 to 308 vote, uh, the, the amendment calls for the government to rule out no deal Brexit. Just note the rally in the table over here. Um, it's been modest and it might be because of this. Yeah, just to add my kind of view on what's happened, I think the market has responded uh, fairly positively to that because as far as what I was reading in the build-up, that was not expected to have gone so through. The next amendment F is underway. The so obviously the, the MPs now are leaving the main floor and they're going to go back to the corridors now to vote on the Malt House F. But yeah, the reason why I think the market's moved here is that this wasn't expected to go through. This does, as we were discussing in the, the initial build-up, it basically it's the same as the government's motion however it deletes all of May's text replacing it with much plainer rejection of leaving without a deal um, so even in, in essence it gives Parliament a little bit of option here about the potential stuff that could be done in order to avert the no deal as far as I'm aware this doesn't mean that no deal is completely off the table at this point um, but it's a surprise because it was thought then that this would fail, but the government's one will go through. That's not to say that the government's one will still pass. In terms of the market reaction here, you saw the pound initially blipped up when that went through. However, the pounds now come back down. Now, what you need to be quite clear of here is that now you've got you know, this is a fast money execution on a piece of breaking news because you do, net, do not want to sit in a long position when the results come in for the Malthouse Amendment F because if that gets accepted, well then that pound's going to flip and reverse and quite aggressively stop you out that position. So this is about just profiting on that quick little fast money move and hence you get a bit of a pullback.
Okay, so we've still got a bit of time. Um, you're going to get another amendment, the Malt House one. Uh, again, just to be clear, this proposes the government to take steps to minimise no deal disruptions by publishing basically a series of, of different points of information. Yeah, so, so Jasminda, as the, you probably heard. Again, although this is a non binding vote, it could be quite difficult for me to ignore it. Yeah, Jasminda, I was just going to say, I don't know if you heard, but um, we have an internal squawk box, which is a group of analysts uh, we have that provide audio commentary for us uh, and our traders. And they were just talking about that, um, lots of journalists talking about the fact that this does not remove. Um, a no deal being a possibility. Um, obviously much more updates to come. It's very technical about the legal side of things. Um, it doesn't detract from the point that in the end, if certain mechanisms don't happen, a no deal st could still happen on March 29th, effectively. Uh, Jeff, thanks for the the kind comment. Will is actually here this evening, um, so if I get a chance, I'll get him to quickly jump on the screen. But um, Jeff, great to hear that. <laughs> Ten years on, uh, you're still able to um, uh, to get involved with Amplify. I hope this new live format uh, is beneficial. We are going to do we're going to cover the FOMC on the 20th of March live, just like this as well. So hopefully you'll be able to join that. Uh, but Jeff, yeah, great to hear. That things are going well if you're ever in the city we've actually moved from canary wharf actually based just around the corner of the bank of england so if you're in town whenever that is always feel free if it's during the week to stop by love to uh, to catch up <coughs>
uh, in order to just make a little bit of sense at least of uh, what's been going on here Laura Koonsberg is probably the putting it in, in easiest layman terms uh, the main vote is now on whether the UK can ever leave the EU without a deal because of the earlier Spellman vote, which was a surprise. Government is now said to be trying to force its own MPs to vote against its own motion, which is obviously, again, not what was expected. This is now because of the Spellman one has passed. It means that Tory ministers did not get their free vote out of which they'd agonised over. And remember, only the government... Uh, only promised that they would give a vote on extension tomorrow if planned to rule out no deal was passed. So, yeah, it is not straightforward, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, just waiting for this final one and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap things up. Simeon, I hear what you're saying, actually. Um, it's one of those things, right? It's kind of like Donald Trump. He knows the deadlines, say, for the trade war and uh, the 1st of March tariffs, pushes it right up to the limit, hoping that something there materialises. And fair play to him, he's actually come out the right side of that more often than not. Uh, I think politicians, doesn't matter if it's Trump or if it's UK, they're all of the same disposition in that sense. The obvious thing here is we are dealing with uh, a large economic consequence if nothing does get sorted as we said technically we could still have a no deal and um, as you say I, get, I, I hear what you're saying about I keep kicking the can but that road is going to run out at some point you would think the one, the one thing I would say is you know we've just been commenting uh, this is very complicated at the moment I mean actually if it wasn't for the, the Brexit journalists tweeting it would be way more difficult um, but if it is confusing I would say probably not then of a, uh, a situation that you should um, you should trade because your probabilities of success are diminished if you really can't make sense of the fundamental developments is my personal view you are literally trading price action which can be done but it lowers your probability i would say okay results due to come out shortly
Okay, just to um, just to wrap things up then. So uh, again, just to be crystal clear. So 321 versus 278. Parliament votes to reject No Deal by a majority of 43. A lot of people, though, a lot of the market kind of Brexit commentators just talking about what an absolute mess this is at the moment. Default position remains the UK will leave the EU without a deal unless something else is agreed. Yeah, so May's obviously talking her own book here, talking about the fact that you're going to crash out of the EU unless you have a deal, that deal being her deal, of course. The point being here is that, I mean, overall, it's a fairly contained reaction through this whole process. So Squawk was saying, there's a couple of people murmuring that this is peeping the pressure on Theresa May having seen her meaningful vote fail twice. Now she's getting some government kind of cabinet resignations on the back but the fact that the what's happened with the Spellman vote and they weren't allowed a free vote with the whips involved. So yeah, pretty messy overall I'd say no real one sustained trade here like I said don't forget the pre-positioning in the market we were already up substantially through the session because of the fact that these things definitely the, the, the government's bombs expected to pass so yeah I'm gonna leave it at that um, and I'll just wrap up a few final things so, just coming on to a different subject then, just to wrap things up for the evening. I know you guys probably want to have your dinner and uh, and so on. But if we, this is the Amplify website. So on here, you've got a drop-down box where you can choose your options. So you've got um, the trading program, the summer internship if you're a student, uh, financial education. This is more for institutions. Um, but if you click on the professional trading one, there's one thing here that might be applicable for some of you guys in the in the chat that's still watching. Um, so I just wait for this to load up. But if you scroll down, you can access basically uh, the Amplify Weekly Strategy. So if you just punch your email in this bottom part here, um, Sam and I, uh, the chap you see with me in the morning briefing, who's uh, kind of our technical based or oriented trader he joins me on the morning briefings this being the one from this morning and uh, we write a report every Monday that we issue giving our macro fundamental and our technical view for the week ahead uh, so yeah you can get that weekly strategy to your inbox here every Monday you just need to type your email in here and, and hit the subscribe button uh, if you did have any interest in in the courses then uh, that we do as part of our training uh, got some case studies here uh, of previous people that have attended the course. You've also got then more information about each individual course, so like the career program, for example. If you just click on that, it'll open up a, a kind of sub page and you can get more information about uh, what that entails uh, and so on. But um, there's quite a few guys I know in the chat that have done Amplify training before. I always say the best people to speak to are the people who've done it. They will give you the best honest appraisal of uh, what they thought uh, and what they've got out of it. So, yeah, just a final thing. Um, we obviously, if you go on our YouTube channel, uh, I know a lot of you, the fact that you're online right now, you probably already do this anyway. But if you don't, then uh, if you click subscribe, um, then click notifications and then every time we upload a video or we go live you'll get an alert on your phone and then uh, you can watch us uh, and take part in the discussion so as you'll see here the live stream we're doing right now is up here the morning briefings are in this category down here um, also as well as a point of note every Sunday I um, I do a, a live broadcast from home just going through my preparation of a look ahead definitely playing on my strengths which is the fundamental kind of macro analysis so if that's useful I normally do that on a Sunday as a live session as well uh, and then if you do use Twitter um, feel free to follow me on Twitter I'm relatively active um, so for example talking about Brexit this morning I'll share kind of some of the slides that I was with some of the guys here internally um, I tweet kind of infographics about stuff. Obviously, a lot of it's related to Brexit at the moment. 
but yeah, feel free to, to add me and uh, hopefully I can be of use from a, an opinion analysis point of view as well. All right, other than that, that's it. Um, so everyone who's joined us, thank you very much. I wish you a good evening and I'll see you for the briefing again tomorrow morning. Oh, there's, uh, there's Donald Trump in the background. Who's, is that Donald Trump in the background? Who's this guy? <laughs> It must, it's getting late I think they've been drinking on the trading floor so um, that's them not me I should say okay guys good night